Going out in the winter time might sound crazy to some people, but it's actually one of the better times of year to go. And that's because there are way less people and no bugs. The only downside, of course, is it gets really freaking cold. So having a proper clothing layering system is way more important in the winter than it is in summer. Hi, my name is Blaine, AKA the Plaid Lad. And today I'm going to be going over my at camp winter clothing layering system and what I use to keep myself warm when I go on my winter trips. Now it's important to note that what works for me might not work for you. Clothing is very personal, but I hope that you can use this video as kind of a guide. So that way, when you go to make your layering system, you can stay warm and enjoy your time out there. If you enjoy content like this, please be sure to click on the like button, hit the subscribe button, and hit the little bell notification. So that way you get notified whenever I put up a new video. So before we get into all of the clothing items, we should talk about what to look for in your clothing items. Number one, you don't ever want to wear cotton. Nothing like this, all right? Um, cotton kills. That's, that's the cliche phrase at this point, all right? The reason for that is cotton doesn't wick moisture, it absorbs it, and when it gets wet, it will suck your body heat out from you. So you want something that's either made out of a synthetic material, like a polyester or uh, nylon, uh, something like that, or so, uh, different kinds of wool. Um, typically, I like to hike in synthetics and I do wool at camp, but there's exceptions um, all the time. So without further ado, let's get started. Getting started here, we're gonna start from the feet and work our way up. Uh, so without further ado, let's get started. My first thing for at camp is my base layer, which are these darn tough um, mountaineering socks. These are a heavyweight, um, like just under the knee height sock. Um, I actually have two pairs of these. I had a black pair, but they ripped on my uh, December Manistee trip. Uh, I still gotta work on getting those replaced. Uh, haven't gotten around to it yet, but uh, they're fantastic. And I like that they go up just under the knee because that adds a little bit of extra warmth to like my calves and stuff. And depending on what underquilt I'm using, that really helps out with keeping my legs warm. Okay, so for trips where it's going to be in the 30s or down to the mid 20s, these function as my camp shoes and uh, extra layer of insulation for when I sleep. Um, so these have a nice little grip on the bottom, but that doesn't really matter a lot because I use these over booties, which are actually made for the Goose Feet Gear um, down socks, and um, put those over this. Now the reason I use these instead of the Goose Feet Gear down socks is I found that walking around in those compresses all the down and your feet end up cold when you try to go to sleep in those. But these are made to be walked around in because these are an actual slipper. So walking around camp with those over booties, which I have seam sealed, so they are waterproof, um, keeps my feet warm and dry, and nothing ruins a trip faster than having wet, cold, wet feet. Trust me, I've been there a couple times. It's no fun, even with the rest of you is warm. Your feet are cold, you can't stop thinking about it. Now the next item for my feet, uh, I haven't actually gotten to use on a trip yet. Uh, about a year ago, I went on a trip in Manistee National Forest and it got down to minus two degrees Fahrenheit. And uh, my feet were cold the whole time. 
didn't matter if I was moving or not. So <laughs> to combat that, because I watch way too many YouTube backpacking videos, I stumbled upon the Steger Muck Lux. Um, now I have hiked in these before. It was just one day um, where I hiked in these and I was just kind of testing them out. It was actually Christmas day this year. Um, and they are super comfortable. It's like hiking in slippers. Um, the laces are kind of ridiculously long. Um, <laughs> But the nice thing about these is they can be used as a hiking layer or an at camp layer. And um, give me a moment here. Find all my wares. So if I hike in wearing them and they get all sweaty, I can bring an extra liner and extra insoles, and these are wool, and swap those out when I get at camp. So I have essentially clean, dry footwear. And these are supposed to keep you warm down to 40 below, and I believe it. Uh, the day I hiked in these, I think it was around 18 degrees Fahrenheit, and I'll throw up whatever that is in Celsius on the screen here. Uh, and my feet were so warm, they were almost too warm. Um, I only had one, one set of socks on in these, so. Uh, these are incredible. So on the trips where I bring the Mucklux, my plan is to sleep in these. These are the Outdoor Vitals Loft Tech booties. So these have a synthetic insulation in them, uh, which is why I like them, which is because uh, with down, your sweat can start to affect the loft of the down but it won't affect the synthetic material in here. So if my feet get a little too warm, it's not gonna affect the loftiness of these booties and my feet will continue to stay warm. Um, I would much rather have warm feet than cold feet in the winter time. Uh, these weighed twice as much as like the Z-Packs, not Z-Packs, uh, the Goose Feet Down uh, booties, but they handle moisture much better, which is why I prefer these and I actually find them to be a little bit warmer, in my personal opinion, too. Okay, so moving up the body now, we're going to go to my legs. And the first piece of gear, um, as a base layer, but not my underwear, my underwear will remain mine and mine only to know. So for my bottoms of choice, I go with these Smart Wool 250 weight Merino Wool base layers. And uh, these are, are pretty warm. Um, I have a pair of REI ones that are like 185 weight and these are significantly warmer. So this is what I go with in the winter time. Um, not much to say about them. They're tights. Um, they're tight, they fit, they keep me warm. Okay, for my next item, I have the Enlightened Equipment Torrid Insulated Pants. Um, these are synthetic, so if they get wet, again, it doesn't matter. Um, and these will keep me warm with just the base layers on, probably down into the high teens. Um, my legs weren't cold at all. Um, earlier this winter, I camped down to about 17 degrees and I was still pretty pretty toasty in these um, and even though they're synthetic they do compress really nice um, maybe not as, of course not as good as down uh, these have the apex climate shield insulation is a sheet insulation in there um, but it doesn't take up too much room in my pack uh, they're super lightweight super warm a uh, little pricey I wish they had pockets that's like the only thing I change about these um, but other than that, fantastic piece of gear. I don't go on any trips where it's gonna be below 30 degrees without these. For trips where it's going to be getting down into the, I don't know, the lower teens, the tens, anywhere below that, I bring along an extra mid layer for my legs and that is the REI uh, Teton 2.0 uh, jogger pants. Um, 
They're fleece, so they're synthetic, and uh, they have pockets, which is fantastic. So I'll put these on over the base layer and under the insulated pants. Um, this way I can keep like my phone, a lighter, anything I need to keep warm inside these pockets. Um, and it has a couple of layers of insulation over it. Uh, I don't bring these super often because I don't get the weather to where it's going to warrant bringing these, but uh, they do add a nice little bit of warmth on those super, super cold trips. All right, moving up a little further up the body now to my torso. Um, I have my first base layer, which is another Smartwool 250 weight base layer. Uh, this is, I believe they're called their classic top or something like that, but it's a uh, half zip, which I really like um, because if I am a little too warm, I can open that up and I can vent a little bit of heat because you don't want to get too hot because you start to sweat, you're going to get really, really cold really, really fast. Um, but this is very, very warm. I was again using an REI 185 weight one last year. I've been using this all year long and uh, it's incredible. Uh, so much warmer. It's even a little bit more comfortable on the skin. Uh, absolutely love this thing. All right, so as a mid layer, I've been bringing, uh, I've only brought it on the past couple trips, but I've been really enjoying it. This uh, Alpaca fleece hoodie from the Appalachian Gear Company. Um, super, super soft. Like, I wish you could feel, feel this. But uh, you can't because this is a video and I can't come through your screen like the girl from The Ring. So, um, I'm not, not much more to say about it. Um, it seems pretty, pretty dang sturdy. Um, uh, it's, kept me pretty warm. It's, I love that it has the hood because uh, I don't necessarily have to put on another hat. Uh, I can use the hood as part of my head layering system too. So super nice. Okay, my next layer uh, that I've been using lately and really enjoying is the Outdoor Vitals uh, Vario jacket. Uh, this is again a synthetic jacket. Uh, I've talked about this several times already. I love it that much. Um, it's not a full winter weight jacket. Um, now I've gotten away with just this and the other layers that I've mentioned before, but I could tell I was pushing it. So I would bring this as an extra mid layer if it's gonna be like really, really below freezing or, or right around, sorry, not freezing, below zero. It's gonna be really, really below zero. Uh, or close to zero, uh, I would bring this as an extra mid layer, but I wouldn't rely on this solely. Now for a really good dedicated winter layer, I bring the Enlightened Equipment Torrid Pullover Jacket. This again has the um, Apex um, Climashield, I think that's it, yeah, Apex Climashield. Uh, insulation in it, but this is a much heavier weight as far as the insulation goes. It's actually lighter than the Vario jacket by like a fraction of an ounce, uh, but this is super warm. It does not really compress as small even as the pants though. Um, yeah, it doesn't compress a lot, so that's kind of the downside of it, but it's super, super warm. Um, and it's a little big on me because I got this before I lost my weight. I've lost about 80 pounds. Um, so I can actually layer quite a bit under this. And it does have cinch draw cords around the hem, which I really like to help um, lock things in. So I can have layers on this and then cinch it down to, uh, to my liking. And this will help keep me super duper toasty. The big guns for my torso system is been also talked about to death on YouTube, and that is the Lester River Bushcraft uh, Wool Boreal Anorak. This is a stupid expensive item, but it's it's hardy as hell. Um, this is an heirloom item. 
I can probably pass this down to my kids and they can probably pass it down to theirs. Uh, this is made out of, literally made out of an old army wool blanket. This is not soft at all, like a uh, merino wool or an alpaca wool, but uh, it's flame retardant. Snow just beads up on this. This thing doesn't even really get wet. Um, it, it, it's, uh, it blocks the wind actually fairly decent too. Uh, this is an amazing, amazing layer and it's got the nice big kangaroo pocket. Um, and then there's a pockets within the kangaroo pocket. So this, this thing uh, is, is, uh, is a beast especially for when you're processing wood, working around the fire, because this is flame retardant. Um, you can, you don't have to worry about getting your insulated layers, getting holes burned through them if you're wearing this over it. But it weighs three pounds. So I don't bring it super often, but when it's going to be closing in on that zero mark, yeah, I'm bringing this thing. Inching a little bit further up the body here, um, going towards my neck. I have uh, this Appalachian Gear Company Alpaca Wool Neck Gaiter. Um, only used it on one trip so far, but this thing is super warm. Um, I typically only use it when I'm like sleeping, I would use one of these, but I might have it on if it's especially chilly around camp to just help keep my nose a little bit warmer. Uh, but this, is, I've tried a couple of other like thinner merino wool ones this one is so much warmer, so much better. I, I actually had to take it off on my last trip, um, or at least off of my face, because I was getting way too warm in this and I could feel myself starting to sweat, so I, I had to take this off. Um, my last trip was pretty warm. It only got down to 28. So um, uh, on colder trips, I can see this being super, super important. Okay, so moving on to my hands. Um, lately, I've just been lazy and using the same gloves that I've been hiking in at camp for a lot of it, but it is nice to have a dedicated set of camp gloves just for uh, keeping them dry and everything. I have made the mistake of getting my gloves wet, all my gloves wet on a winter trip before, and my hands were cold the whole time. No bueno. You don't want to be there. As, as much as it sucks having your feet be cold, it sucks almost worse having your hands be cold because you can't do anything if you don't have the dexterity. Uh, so I start off with, um, they look like socks like I have them right now, but they're these smart wool uh, liner gloves as my first line of uh, defense. Now I won't wear these if I'm like processing wood or anything like that. Um, but sitting in my hammock at the night, at the end of the night, they do have the little um, touch screen fingertips. They don't work super great, but um, I can start up a movie with these on and keep my hands nice and toasty while I'm inside the hammock. My next hand layer that I'll typically bring with me are these Enlightened Equipment Torrid Mittens. Um, this video is not sponsored by Enlightened Equipment. I don't have any sponsors because my channel is ridiculously small right now. Um, but I just love their, their gear. Um, and what I really like about these mittens is you can get it in the flip top. So I can do something where I might need a little bit of dexterity and then I can put the, the warm part back over my fingers and stay nice and warm. Uh, these are super warm gloves. Um, my hands are actually getting a little warm on it right, in it right now. Um, but uh, nice layer to put on over the smart wool gloves if need be as well. Keep my hands really nice and toasty warm. Okay, so my next item is an item that I totally stole all the ideas from, from Shug. Uh, no shame. <laughs> but uh, they are these Steger mittens. Uh, these are really nice. Uh, it's, I don't know if this is actual leather or if it's pleather or, or whatever, but it has this. This is just so you can kind of wipe the old snot off and it kind of uh, makes it a little easier because 
when I'm outside in the winter, I'm a snotty boy. <laughs> um, and then I sewed on a D-ring onto these and uh, attached a leash with some reflective uh, paracord uh, so I can keep these around my neck. So I, that way it's not a hassle to find a pocket to put these in. Um, and I can, um, you know, take them off, do what I gotta do and stick them right back in there and uh, keep, keep them handy. Pun intended. <laughs> um, <laughs> boy. Oh, they're nice because uh, this outside part is canvas and then inside is a double layer Polar Tech fleece liner. So these are ridiculously warm. Um, excited to try these out this year, but I have not had the opportunity yet. I'm hoping sometime in the near future to be able to give these a go, but it's my plan. Okay, and so now it's finally time to move up to my my head, which needs a little extra protection in these conditions. So the first piece of headgear that I've been going to lately has been, again, from Appalachian Gear Company. Again, not sponsored. Uh, an alpaca beanie. This isn't the warmest hat in the world. Um, it's a little thinner compared to some of the other alpaca wool items that I have. This would honestly probably be good hiking in layer too um but it's uh in conjunction with the hood or another hat this is pretty nice um i like having a lighter layer so that way i can if my head's getting really hot but my i know my ears are going to get cold i can have this on my head won't get too warm and my ears will stay warm enough next item that i have is this uh, Shug hat, which I got from Shug's daughter, Ariel, on her Etsy shop, Nitty Gritty Chicago. Um, excellent shopping experience. Um, she let me pick the colors I wanted. Um, I went with red and black because I love red and I wanted it to pop out. Uh, but this is an Icelandic wool and I'll put it on over that hat because this is a little scratchy to have over the base of your head, especially when, you know, chrome dome here. Um, uh, it adds a lot of extra heat uh, to that hat and putting a hood over that, I mean, that's some serious, serious head warmth there. Last but certainly not least is the Outdoor Vitals Loft Tech Balaclava. Um, I really like this one and the reason I went with this one over, say, Enlightened Equipment or I know War Bonnet makes them. Um, a lot of people make these, is the cinch is on the front. So a lot, a lot of these things, you'll have the cinch like right here. So you're laying in your pillow and you have that little cord lock pressing right in the back of your head, which I can't sleep that way. So it's really nice to have it in the front here because I can, you can cinch it all the way closed. Um, so I can kind of control how much is open and I can breathe into this because again, it's synthetic. The moisture is not going to affect it. And it will also absorb some of the condensation, uh, probably along with the wool neck gaiter. Those together will absorb a lot of the condensation from my breath throughout the night. Uh, and I like to use a winter top cover. So that's a, a thing I usually have to deal with. Um, uh, it's super comfortable. I'll even put it on over those other hats. Uh, but because I'm in a hammock and I'm using a top quilt, I don't have the hood like a sleeping bag would have. Um, this is a pretty essential item for me. Um, I've been using it for a little over a year and I can't imagine going in the winter time without it. Super awesome. Okay, so that covers pretty much all of my winter layering system. I hope you were able to get some value out of that. I know I had some pricier items on here. Um, now just keep in mind, if you don't want to buy all this expensive stuff, you don't have to. Um, just think synthetic or wool. Um, synthetic's probably going to be a lot cheaper than wool. Um, just no cotton. 
Uh, I hope this gave you some inspiration to maybe tweak your winter layering system, or if you've never been winter camping before, maybe it's giving you some thoughts of some items you might already have, uh, you know, fleeces, things of that nature, that you can use to get you out in the backcountry this winter. Thank you all very much for watching, and I will catch you on the next one. Another thing that'll keep you warm is your snow puppy. For three.